Howdy and welcome to another Bevy video. This was another short week for me due to both the Bevy game jam and the fact that my internet's been out all week. They are adding fiber to my area and somehow managed to hit the cables underneath the road, which is causing a long term outage. This week for the game, I focused on adding everything I learned during the Bevy game jam into my existing project. Specifically, I have the project ready for web builds and I have set up an itch.io page. Going forward, each week will come with a live playable demo in the browser hosted on itch. I even set up continuous integration with Git to automatically create and publish the executable each week, and I'll show how I did that. I've also started the process of getting the game approved for upload onto Steam. I don't expect this to be a commercial success, but I'm hoping there's a lot of valuable knowledge to be gained from releasing on Steam. And thanks to my wonderful Patreons and YouTube member support, I'm able to justify spending the $100 to go through Steam's process. In getting ready for the web build, I also had to redo how I handled loading my configuration files, and swapped over to using a Bevy Asset Loader based system instead of simply reading the file like I usually do. Finally, I wrote a book documenting the design of the game, and I have some rationale over why I chose to write a book instead of the normal REST documentation generator. So without further ado, let's start looking at the continuous integration setup. For CI, I'm opting to steal from Bevy's CI template project on GitHub. Specifically, I'm stealing their release.yaml. I don't personally care too much about CI runs on every push, because sometimes I'll push a week's work with clippy complaints, and I'm not using unit tests for this project or accepting PRs, so I don't really see any value to wasting GitHub's resources and my time fighting with it. Releases, however, is very convenient, because all I need to do is create a git tag, and then GitHub can automatically generate all the binaries for each platform and upload them directly to itch. To use this release.yaml, all I needed to do was have a wasm folder containing the index.html and a javascript file containing some audio fixing code. I also needed to go into GitHub and give the actions write permission, so the final artifacts can be added to the release. This is currently not documented in the CI template repo, so don't forget this step and check their issues if you run into an error that a build file doesn't exist. Also, make sure to change the binary name to match what is in your TOML exactly, or the build will fail. Each build takes about 15 minutes on GitHub, so it's a bit painful to fail it multiple times. Then, to set up itch integration, I had to get an API key from itch and add it to my GitHub secret page for the project. Now, I create the itch page for the game and add it to the CI YAML, and then on release the game should automatically be uploaded to the store page. I had one weird problem where the WASM file wasn't set up right on the first push, but all I had to do was download and re-upload the file, and check that it will be played in browser. Double check this if you get an error from itch about missing an index.html. Overall, I'm really happy that I learned this skill, because now it's trivial to have a game ready for you to play at the end of each devlog, and it saves so much hassle of building and uploading the files myself. Also, as I said, I started the process of releasing the game on Steam. I'm hoping just to put it up as early access and charge 99 cents as a donation, to help me recoup the Steam fees. I really think using things like the Steamworks crate and eventually contributing to it will be a good use of my time. I've never went through the Steam process before, so it's also a good personal experience for me. It seems like the process will take a couple of months, including a few 30 day waiting periods, so by then I'm hoping to have a full vertical slice of the game to show and upload. I might even be able to get CI working with Steam, which would be really cool. Next up, I had all the fun of rewriting things to support the web. Specifically on web, I can't just call file open to load my RON files like I do on desktop platforms. I did some research into what the solution would be, and I thought about having different macros for different targets, but the web solution seemed non-trivial. Instead, I opted to take on another dependency into the project that allows for the creation of custom assets in a variety of formats. So far, I'm only using the RON feature of this crate, so I think if it's abandoned, I can handle forking it myself. This does add the horrible problem of asynchronous loading now. Previously, I knew my RON files were super small and I just loaded them synchronously and accepted that any frame stutter should happen when the screen was black and would last less than a few frames. However now, especially on web, loading of things like the room format and enemy files can take one or two frames, and worse yet, the room files refer to what enemy files to load, which then refer to what combat descriptors to load. Overall, this creates a horrible chain of loading, and I can't really spawn the room until all of these finish. 
I really wish Bevy's asset server would just let me block until a load was complete, but I guess that's not the professional solution, and it's better just to set things up now in case the files ever have meaningful load times. I added a new loading state, which has only a single loading system in it. Here, I basically check each frame if everything is loaded, and then I enter the restore room state, which is also used after combat. I take advantage of the fact that the asset loader always returns the same handle when loading the same object multiple times. Eventually, everything is loaded and I'm able to create the current room resource. I could add another dependency like bevy asset loading to help reduce how much of this I'm coding myself, but I don't really want to introduce all the complexity that bevy asset loading adds. Finally, I decided to write a book for the project. I've always wanted to learn the markdown books process, and it was shockingly easy to get working. All you do is install it, create the book, and serve it. The default mdbook serve command even handles rebuilding the book on any file change, and it's been super cool to work with. So far, I've documented the states and the modules in the project to give a high-level overview of what they do and what they're responsible for. Soon, I'm hoping to cover all the components in the game as well, but that's a bit of tedium to document so much existing work. But once it's done, I just need to make sure I update it each commit, and with some discipline, it will all stay in sync. I'm opting to use a book over the built-in Rust docs for a few reasons. First, code is very non-linear, and I don't actually think that documenting each system in isolation really helps get a high-level overview of a project. Rust docs are great as reference material for libraries, but for a binary like a game, I think it's better just to see the code. A book provides the high-level structure in a very linear way that can be designed to read top-down straight through without even touching the code. I think of it like the Bevy Cheat Book, which I would highly recommend over the Bevy docs for learning Bevy. Also, comments tend to rot, and even in Bevy, which has a very high standard for documentation, I'll often find and report minor things that are wrong in the documentation, because comments age separately from the code. We'll see if my theories hold true, but I just honestly don't believe that in-code documentation is the right approach for this project, especially if I'm optimizing for new people coming into the project, or myself coming back to a subsystem after a few months. That's pretty much all I did this week. There were no major gameplay changes, but a lot of DevOps and handling everything around a project like this. My internet is currently still out, so I might not have the itch page ready right when this video releases, but it should be up pretty soon, and definitely ready for next week's video. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, GitHub sponsors, and YouTube members, and thank you for watching.